Hello, everybody. You're watching The Competitive Mindset. My name is Kyle, as you should know by, by now, right? I've done a lot of these things. I'm here with Nick Blandon. Nick, how are you? Uh, good. How's it going, Kyle? Uh, feeling pretty good. Yes. Definitely. Uh, I just got a win at AGP Montreal for uh, the Outer World team. Oh, yeah. Yeah, dude, that was good stuff. You guys uh, had a good showing. You're, I mean, you guys are global right yes yeah uh that's <laughs> two wins now for the team in awesome. uh different countries than the united states as well we have uh well we had a second place in the uk so right. uh someone's going to worlds my brother is actually and then i got a right. first place qualification in canada right and then our other teammate ryan miles and david who's actually from the uk both <laughs> qualified in the states yeah, there you go, man. So um, you guys have four people qualify, and two of them are paid invites. Is that right? Yes. That's solid. Two dude. first place, uh, top four, and second place. Awesome. Yeah, that's good stuff. Um, yeah, it's cool to see you guys running around, doing your thing. Um, it was really cool to see um, your brother, Alex, was uh, – he was the one who got second in the UK. Um, yes. What a cool trip that must have been. And then you over in Canada – World Travelers, watch out. Team Outer World uh, should be just Team Outer Country, I think. <laughs> yeah, point. we're everywhere. <laughs> yeah, watch out. Um, yeah, good stuff, dude. It was really cool, too, because the new cards were out. For you, you're playing in Montreal, um, and all these new cards were out. People you know, were expecting to see a big shift um, in the meta, <laughs> and I don't know how big the shift was. I think we should talk about that right off the bat, but... Um, yeah, you were playing uh, Alice's World, though, without Alice's World. Do you still call it Alice's World? What do you call it, Nick? Um, I call it the Outer World, Ooh. actually, because it uh, kind of goes to the team. And also, it's uh, it's not focused on Alice's World, but it does... I mean, you could pretty much call it that, because it's it, even without Alice's World, the whole core has just pretty much been coined that of <laughs> Morgiana, Cheshire Cat, Cat Familiar, Elvish right. Priest, like the whole... Uh, reflect deck yeah. core with uh, focusing on Guivers. Right. I think uh, everyone has realized at this point that Alice's World or any variant of that with or without Alice's World itself um, is the most complicated deck to play in the format, hands down. Um, there's so many tiny little things that, um, and so many decision trees that if you mess up, it'll take you down. Just It just snowballs, right? You can find yourself in really poor positions. Um, and you, but you can also play yourself out of poor positions. It has a lot of flexibility in that regard. So um, the people that you see winning with Alice's World put so much time into it. Um, would you agree that it, that the deck is is the most complicated? Maybe we. Uh, uh, yeah, that? by far. There's nothing harder to play than Alice's World right now. I think Morgiana probably makes that the hardest, and also right. Reflect is just every turn having so many decisions to make. It's there's just an infinite amount of play lines that you could be making. So like there it's, it's so easy to mess up and so yeah. easy at the same time though, to make really intricate plays and dig yourself out of a really poor position, Absolutely. like having access to almost all the cards in your deck. Yeah. It's insane. Like the, the sculpting that it's capable of, which, um, you know, cause a lot of people have been, uh, arguing, you know, ban reflex. Some people are like, no, just ban Morgiana. Um, I mean, people are just been screaming from all angles. I, you know, I can't even hear anymore. I just hear ringing now. Just <laughs> my, my <laughs> poor eardrums. Um, I mean, we'll, we'll, let's talk about um, reflect for a little bit. Uh, something that I like to get just in a base opinion on from all of the uh, you know top players uh, around the uh, country, which is what do you think uh, of reflect as a card? Is it a problem? Um, is it a must play? What What do you think about it? Well. I don't think it's a like a 100% must play card, but it's definitely by far one of the best rulers that is out right now, and it really shapes how the meta is played and restricts certain plays, restricts a lot of cards from being able to be played at like to their full potential. In that sense, like it pretty much if you want to play a ruler, I feel like Reflect can generate more value and control a game better than any other ruler can, as well as giving uh, aggro a huge boost, but other rulers do have the availability to just flip for huge amounts of damage, like having Primogenitor flip really early or having Bahamut or anything, you know, Valentina or anything like that. But outside of that, I think the only ruler that you could play in any kind of deck is Reflect for the most part, right. just to be able to have all of the utilities, like be able to abuse the Alice World core, like anything mm -hmm. 
pretty much any deck just gets uh, any deck core can get better with a reflect. Yeah, it opens up a lot of options for sure, and um, that's something that we talk about um, a lot just in card games in general because um, people talk very often about um, about reflect and oh, you guys aren't thinking hard enough on how to beat it. Um, I assure you, on on the tavern team side, they are very aggressively trying to figure it out, um, and, and they keep landing on reflect. Um, I'm sure. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. You guys are doing the same, right? Trying to figure out what can beat this freaking thing. Yeah, it's um, it just. I think people make it out to be a bigger problem than it is because if you if when both players have reflex, it can do very very powerful plays but both players generally have access to the same plays it's just kind of if it's how you play your reflect in response to theirs a lot of the times but playing other rulers you kind of it's usually only one strategy beats reflect and it's just to beat it as quickly as possible like flip a bahamut flip a primogenitor and just slam them with huge bodies before they have any time to build up any counters or actually use the reflect yeah, definitely. So, like, I mean, it almost turns into if you're not playing reflect, you need to be playing something way faster than reflect. And on the on the kind of the opposing side of that, it's like, well, you have reflect aggro decks that are already really fast, so you kind of need to beat them. But then on the other side is you have um, Alice's World, which just has some of the most insane turn two, turn three plays possible. Um, I remember back um, were you playing. Um, during like grim cluster with uh, abdul and, and grim and whatnot yeah that's uh, actually when i started playing okay perfect. right around then i really like that format yeah great format i started playing around then too and uh, i remember um people a lot of people were like dark pandora and one of the arguments um this player i was reading some article somewhere uh he was talking about dark pandora and one of the things he said he liked about it and unfortunately i forget his name but um he said it had a potential god hand that just made it the most insane deck possible like besides just being a strong deck you also had this potential opening that would just let you destroy um uh i actually played dark pandora at um the oh, regional in providence it, i only went to two regionals last season i ended up winning uh-huh. uh the houston regional but i didn't even i think i like top 64 at the uh providence event uh-huh. i played dark pandora but the god hand was just like if you have an elvish priest right. got the gretel on turn two and you yeah. could just or like elvish priest into feet sing gretel any mana dorks right. and just flip on like turn three and discard their hand like just no deck could come back from that they're like oh i have zero cards did you uh, also I, uh, yeah like what am i gonna do did you sideboard pandora of light did you do that trick I did not side deck the Pandora Light. Um, it's a good trick. It was a good trick. Someone actually got me with it. I oh, didn't really? think it was coming. <laughs> but uh, I did side deck Abdul, and I did side deck Shaharazad, I think. Oh, awesome. So you could just kind of side into whatever you wanted. Abdul and yeah. Cruz Blessa just really came in a lot against like you know, Shaharazad. Yeah. <laughs> For the most part, you just brought that in, or the other dark Pandora matchups. Totally. Yeah, that was such a cool format. Um, but anyway, like you run into that now, I think, like to, it brings it full circle where it's like, yeah, you could be playing these other decks that are okay um, or they're good, I would say. But then you take a deck like Alice's World that's really good and has a potential to just be the most insane deck on the If you're not playing a mirror match, if your opponent isn't playing white and you're playing Alice's World, feel free to go nuts, right? <laughs> yeah, um, it was mostly just like, as long as you can clear their outs, like you can just say, sort of, oh, like I have the wall when to stop this now, which was right. a huge addition to the deck from the new set, yeah. but there wasn't a whole lot that changed it. I think there's just a few cards that made Alice World better and everything else just still can't really compete with it. Yeah, it's crazy. I think um, we might be stuck in, in, in Alice's world <laughs> for a little bit here. I mean, it's, it's still going to be a top contender for a long time, if not the best deck in the format. I know there's a lot of really strong players who are saying that, hey, this is just it, guys. <laughs> Give it all right. of wind and, you know, here we go. There is a lot of decks, though, that can be built to beat Alice's World. It's just you usually sacrifice the consistency against mm. your other matchups, right. which is... Kind of, I mean, that's kind of how it goes. There's a lot of like a, a bit of like a rock paper scissor going on in the formats a lot of the times. But I think the deck that wins the most consistently would have to be Atlas's World. That's yeah. why I would say it is the best deck. But it can definitely lose to like 
like a lot of times if your opponent's playing like uh, another ruler that I think is the only thing that can really stand for control is like Kaguya 1.0 uh -huh. so like if they have a lot of standbys set and things like that they can just really just crush Alice's world right and yeah. also like uh, reflect like control decks have the same ability right. but the other thing is they sacrifice the ability to just have a more consistent win condition against totally. those decks yeah, which is a big challenge. I mean, uh, Kaguya 1.0 uh, runs into the same problem that Vlad did uh, last format, which is the wrong outs to the wrong cards, <laughs> right? So yeah. you just run into a situation where like, well, this is not the one I need to handle this board state. If I had this other mm -hmm. card, it would have been great. You know, that you never want to be playing the deck where if you, after you lose, you say to your opponent, if I had, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? That usually means you're in a bad spot. Yeah, I think, I mean, Reflect Control is still really good because they can pretty much have access to anything. Right. But uh, I think the, the number one problem card in the format that people seem to ignore is Gwyber. Like, yes. that's the, the real thing that makes Alice World crazy is just to right. go off on turn two and drop 2,400 points of damage or 3,000 points of damage onto the board just staring you in the face. And it's just like, well, I went first you gonna do or yeah. like you know like you just have to come back from that situation there's just not very many good outs to uh yeah you have to it seems like you have to really go for like a sign to the future strategy and just like mm -hmm. not play anything turn one and just let them play into it or just yeah you know play a lot of removal but you know it's kind of hard to do that yeah, it's challenging because first off, I mean, you're you're breaking <laughs> one of the rules of efficiency, which is you're spending usually two will to just get rid of something that they paid one will for. So yeah, so you're like, and on top of going second, it's really hard to come back from that tempo. Like, yeah, absolutely. It's just it, you're so far behind in the board, especially right. when Adam Brawley is down too, because that's oh, a geez. zero mana card, right. like a double Gwyber play. Yeah, and then you like, I think. The only thing to do, really, the best out to Gwyber is your own Gwyber. So right. it, it seems like a really key uh, element in deck building this format right. is just to put Gwyber in almost anything that you can. Right. Yeah, you you have to. I mean, the card is so strong, and, and I think um, you know it's been suggested that they should just rot of the card and make it you uh, pay one less instead yeah, of two. Yeah, it, it seems like a, a really like Fair. simple thing that they could do and it would be i think the idea is that it shouldn't generate free mana right like if it costs five you have to spend five total mana on your turn right to cost one less yeah definitely and um that yeah that'd make it a lot more fair and, and the thing is like you look at like look at the i don't know besides sound of the future what one of the stronger um outs to gliber was susan because then you also get a 12 12 or a 1200 1200 with swiftness that's sweet right except when yeah. they hit you with the robe of the fire rat and game over punk you know <laughs> like what are you yeah do? That, that's the thing about alice's world is you can just play all the outs to the outs pretty much right. like gliber loses to susano is the biggest threat so everyone that's playing alice's world for the most part now if that you'll see topping is playing robe of the fire rat in the main deck one two or two copies <laughs> sometimes even three copies right. of robe of the fire rat right yeah it's it's crazy so like then you're playing this game of like do i now i need to run an out to a freaking robe of the fire rat uh, but then at the same time it's like if i'm not playing reflect i have the most inconsistent deck on the planet so i'm never going to get what i need uh, it really pigeonholes you into um, playing the ruler reflect. Uh, but then also, like, you could argue, oh, well, it gives a lot of diversity of decks. But I don't know, man. You got you got Gwyber, and it's like, if I can drop a 1200-1200 for one will, I think I'm just going to take that option every time, right? And it has flying, too. It's not like it's just right. a 12. To, it's yeah. just, like, <laughs> free damage. It's like, oh, you know, almost a, you know over a quarter of your life total in one swing. Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, one of the things that recently um, people have been talking about um, that I've noticed at least is the idea of trying to build um, – I mean, well, I think the incorrect mindset is we need to beat Reflect. I think um, looking at uh, the ruler is the wrong – the wrong mentality reflect is free every time you loot you know you draw a card put one at the bottom it's free um stopping that uh, for a turn with whatever wacky card like if you're spending will to stop their free thing big big problem already yeah it you just those cards just don't do anything like they're good when you're you're already in a winning position it's like right. a win more card anything that spends 
any kind of will to just like kind of suppress their plays that they're getting for free it's not going to help you at all yeah definitely and and the idea of like the win more card is is something that it comes up in a lot of different card games where you know you're playing a card that um in a position where you're already winning it just makes you win a lot more and not necessary right because you're going to win anyway so those yeah. kind of strategies end up failing um, because it turns out when you're playing against, you know, turn three double Gwyber, you're you're in a difficult situation. Now you're playing from behind. Also, you're putting yourself in a position where you can't really play from behind very well. So you ne- don't need to look at the ruler. I think you have to pay more attention to what it's doing. And I mean, is there, in your opinion, do you think um, this is going to be a problem as far as like the Alice's world with the Gwybers and all that? Um, until they fix either Reflect or Gwyber, or is this something that we just haven't dug around enough for? Well, I think one thing is that if your deck... Well, it's not even if your deck can play. Every deck can play standbys, so every deck has the capability to be playing cards like... um, was it Sign of the Future, which is right. just the absolute best way to beat Alice's World, hands right. down, honestly. It's just to pop that off and remove their Gwybers. <laughs> they have no resources. They can't shuffle them back into their deck if they play Horn. Like, they lose almost all of their damage output. So if they try to go in on turn two and just commit down the Adam Brawley, the double Gwyber play, whatever they want to do, and they just they lose right. right off the bat if they don't have a Wall of Wind up or something like right. that. Wall of Wind. Let's talk about that card for a minute because I think I don't know. Did it, has any card made a larger impact on on Force of Will than Wall of Wind? Uh, using the card uh, honestly, Gwyber and like like that's about it. Right. <laughs> I mean, like it's up there with. Uh, well, no, it's it's not as uh, big as those cards, but I think it is something that every player now has to think about when they're playing. It's an entirely new aspect of the game that you have right. to think about. Oh, they have one open mana. How do I keep myself at one open mana and still make the best play so that right. I can play either not the most important card on my last open mana or just something that I can bait it out with earlier on? Right. Yeah, and it, it, it adds an... I wouldn't say a new element, but uh, um, it's definitely going to be more frequent, which is like they like you have to play around the card uh, Mm -hmm. because if you don't, it's a blowout, right? Like if you just go ahead and try to drop, you know, turn two, you go to drop um, Lancelot and they wall of wind. You're like, no, one, you lose your Lancelot and two. You, you didn't do anything. (laughs) Yeah. And I think, well, it, it made. Uh, uh, decks have a much better chance going second against aggro, which right. I did like that they made that like a, something that we have now in the in our toolkits for when you know you're making decks and you're just like, oh, I don't have to get to rope of the fire out immediately. Right. I can actually just open a wall wind and stop a lancelot turn two, and I might be okay. Definitely. So, but like at the same time, if you're going first, you're already at the tempo advantage, and then if you have something like elvish priest wall of wind you can almost instantly secure the game because yeah. there's just no way your opponent can come back. Yeah, it's, it makes, yeah, it's funny because it makes playing, you know, when you're on the draw, playing from behind a little better, but also it means when you're going first, yeah. <laughs> all of a sudden you have the most insane opening on the planet. Yeah, it's crazy to think about. And what's cool is, what I really like about it is it puts up positions where you can bluff it, which yeah, is awesome. Yeah, I, I was just going to say that is... <laughs> Honestly, I'm so happy that there's finally something great that you can bluff in yeah. this game. Because, yeah. honestly, I, like, Zeke's wasn't always, like, or Cake Zone, you couldn't always really bluff that very well. But, like, the right. Wall of Wind, you just go, oh, maybe I'll untap my Priest at end step or something like that. Something that's really right. easy, and then your opponent's <laughs> just forced to play around it. Right. They're forced to be on tilt, and they have to be like, oh, do I want to take the gamble? Right. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Yeah, it's great. I mean, one thing that like, like I love bluffing in card games. I think it's just a really fun element. Um, <laughs> you didn't see a lot of it in in uh, Force of Will, but I will give credit where credit is due. Quinn Koteki, he uh, he set in his chant standby zone an Elvish priest to bluff <laughs> <laughs> to bluff the sign of the future. Um, and his opponent played around sign of the future the entire rest of the game, and it was just an Elvish priest. And um, he ended up winning, and then you have, you have to reveal what card you set, and it was an Elvish Priest, and his opponent was really embarrassed. <laughs> the just, best one is when you set the uh, the Death Scythe, oh, yeah. and then they play Bow, <laughs> they destroy your Death Scythe, and they just put it in the graveyard, and you're like, thanks. Yeah, all yeah. right. 
Perfect. There we go. <laughs> Add it back to That's hand. the game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's super – It's bluffing is a lot of fun. I think it's a really cool element. It adds a lot of like, oh, my gosh, I was insane, you know, <laughs> like, which, which I just love. I think it's awesome. Yeah, so it's going to be a, a really cool thing to see uh, that happen more, especially in competitive play. Like, it just adds another element, which I think is really cool. Um, let's talk about your deck a little bit. Uh, no Alice's World. What were some of, like, the things that, when you were going to the event, what what was it about your deck where you are like, oh, this is going to be good? Oh, well, um, Pumpkin Witch is the main thing. There's right. two Pumpkin Witches in the deck, and being able to draw Pumpkin Witch and then slam down, you just... You try to stockpile Adam Brawlies and Gwybers in your hand, right. <laughs> and you just keep drawing through the decks. So you just throw down a bunch of free cards, and then when it's time to win the game, you drop your hand down, and you just OTK your opponent. Yeah, that's fun. So with Alice's World, you still have to kind of like enter your next turn, draw right. into the combo, like right. fill up your board for a sprint, or drop down the Gwybers to do the damage. Right. And also, it can be played around a little more easily by things like Flame King Shout. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, that's super fun. I think uh, like we saw a little bit. Pumpkin Witch made a comeback for sure, like a strong comeback. Like we've seen a lot of Pumpkin Witch uh, side boarded, main boarded. Uh, we even mm-hmm. saw some funky, like servant of reflect Pumpkin Witch nonsense, like early on in the format. Um, what do you think, like Pumpkin Witch? Is this just a good card, or is it a good card under these circumstances? Well. I think there's certain cards that enable it to be really good. Right. Cards like Ad- like the incarnation mechanic, things like Adam Brawley, and also mm-hmm. Gwyber, again, being a one-mana 12-12 flyer, is already a problem, but yeah. it makes it even more of a problem with Pumpkin Witch. But also, I think... I don't really like the way that um, the mechanics work in the game, so that uh, effects that cloud over your field until the end of the turn will work on things that are played after Pumpkin Witch. Right. So you can summon a Pumpkin Witch and then keep incarnating and kill your opponent. I don't really think it should work like that, but <laughs> like it, that could kind of fix the problem if it, the cards like just didn't work like that at all. Yeah, but also, I mean, if there weren't the other problem cards of just one mana and zero mana cards that right. are extremely <laughs> damage efficient right. to combo with it, then that problem wouldn't be there. Yeah, totally. I think um, I think the incarnate um, incarnate is a really really interesting mechanic and honestly kind of broken you know like it hasn't yeah it's my favorite mechanic in this game by far oh for sure super fun and um i think um it had a little time where it was like oh this is a pretty good deck and i think it it um got shut down pretty quickly um it was around the time when like uh you know red arla was a thing and uh, that was just stronger but um Overall, I think like it's a near broken mechanic. I think Adam Brawley kind of shows that because Adam Brawley gets so oh, yeah. much value and can be played in any deck. I I don't think the thing about Adam Brawley that makes me like it just above and beyond is so good is because it can replace itself and it generates mana. The two right. <laughs> best things that cards can do. Yeah, it does. And totally. there's conveniently two sacrifices that already replace themselves in the form of Cheshire Cat and Cat Familiar elvish priest if you need to like you play all of the colors in alice's world so it doesn't really matter besides red that's the only thing you don't play right yeah that's true uh what do you think about that have you ever thought of uh throwing red in in like an alice's world type of deal i know we saw it a little bit with like uh little red because it would get granny to drop a guaira the same way what do you think about those kind of things those kind of strategies? um there's like two main things that i like that w- you would gain from the red mechanic which is you could get ruck egg yeah. Ruckhead can search out Susanoo as an answer to Gwyber if you know that you can't counter it or anything like that. So right. it just gives you an easy way to grab that out of your deck uh-huh. and deal 400 damage to Elvish Priest now that Reflect can't right. pump. So you can beat the Mana Dork, get the out. Like it just makes the Alice World matchup go a little smoother, but it's a little harder to fit the red mana if like you're not guaranteed to always hit it early on. So I don't want anything to clog in my opening right. hand. That makes sense. You don't really have the space in the deck too, but it, it could be a good addition. <laughs> The other yeah. thing is, I do like Little Red and Granny, but it's, again, like, space. Yeah, you gotta just choose the 40 best cards, and since you don't run any, you know, stones in your main deck, um, you just run the 40 best cards, you always draw the best cards, and you'll just put to the bottom all the situational ones, you know? Yep, pretty much. Yeah, I think it's interesting, it, it opens up so many lines of play, I think um, it's, it's really challenge. Uh, excuse me, it's really challenging uh, to deck build right now um just for anyone because the deck to be is alice's world which requires such skill to play that you might 
come up with a deck that you think is just insane. You're like, this crushes Alice's world all the time. I play with my buddy Joe, and he just gets stomped. And, well, it turns out Joe's not that good at playing Alice's world, <laughs> you know? So your deck that was great is less great because Joe was less great. So I'm going to have to put a lot of pressure on Joe. You know, he's just trying to make it in this world. But you get my point. <laughs> is <laughs> your, your testing really relies on having a very strong Alice's World player so you can jam the decks together and see if they're actually good. Um, I just think it makes it really challenging for people to deck build right now. Well, I was actually thinking about um, writing up an article maybe. But, uh, it might be coming up on the Outer World website. But mm -hmm. about deck building, there's a lot of... You have to build your decks so that the deck you want to make is the win condition. That, I feel like right. that really defines what you want to make. You're like, oh, I'm playing Primogenitor. Primogenitor is how I'm going to win the game. Right. Or I'm playing Alice's World, like Gwyver and the Alice World combo. Like whatever I'm focusing on is what's going right. to win the game. But you have to include all these tech uh, cards just to beat everything in the format. So right. like every deck has to have an out to Gwyver or Gwyver itself because that is an out to Gwyver. <laughs> like you have to, you have to be able to beat all of the opposing Regalia in deck like so in yeah, as in deck building you're really looking for like a, a 20 maybe 25 card core to begin with and then the other you know 10 to 15 slots will just be like oh consistency for the rest of my deck or just cards that beat the format like sign of the future barrier wyber uh any form of removal like demon flame i actually saw was getting a lot of play at montreal and it was doing really well as just a one man away to beat wyber yeah. If you have some way to put damage on it, just from anything like flame sprites, things like that. Yeah. Definitely. Lancelot pings. Yeah. Yeah. It is good. I, I think, um, I mean, cause you could even use, um, the bow, uh, what is it? Artemis bow and whatnot. The demon flame is, I think it's just a uh -huh. solid card in general, especially if you have a free way, like you said, um, what is it? Flame sprite. That's a free way really to just do a hundred damage mm -hmm. to Gwyber, get it off the board. So it's not cost you anything. That's the thing you have to weigh the cost, right? And um, is it better just to play Gwyber instead of playing the... the thing Honestly, I think if you can play Gwyber, you should be playing Gwyber. If your deck plays light, you should try to find room for it unless you're really going for a hard control strategy that wins right. something later in the game, like Celestial Wing Seraph or something like that. Yeah, yeah, which is a cool card. I do like that. That was a good, that was a good name drop you just did. Fun card. Um, all right. Well, awesome. Yeah. So I appreciate your time. I think, um, you know, I, I think we're going to see some more stuff come out. Um, we're going to see if they do anything about um, like reflect or guive or anything. I wouldn't hold your breath out there. Um, you know, definitely breathe in, breathe out through the nose, out the mouth and uh, stay calm. I'll, uh, I'll keep calm. I'll try. Yeah, yeah please, please do. Uh, Nick's going to just go keep winning stuff. Are you going to any more events, Nick? Uh, I should be going to the AGP in Pittsburgh and right. Providence coming up. Oh, sweet. Okay, I think yeah, in cool. April and then the other one's in August or July or something. Like that. Are you I coming to Vegas? Like. I don't know if I am. All right. Well, I'll be in I Vegas. saw that Reflect is the prize card, and that <laughs> really makes me want to buy a plane ticket out right. there, but I, uh, I might might hold off. I don't know. Well, we'll see. I know I'll be in Vegas if anybody wants to come in. I would say party, but we're just playing cards, so <laughs> not, not too much party. It's funny, we're going to, it's always cracks me up when there's card games in Vegas, because there couldn't be two more opposite, you know, I love card games, um, and people usually go to Vegas to just party, in, like, just do insane partying, and uh, I play cards there, it's kind of crazy. Yeah, it seems like very uh, opposite demographics of people for yeah. the most part, too, yeah. but, um, <laughs> it's really odd to tell people you're like oh yeah i'm going to vegas for the weekend and you're just like yeah i'm like i'm playing cards oh, what you yeah. Think, though, you know, like, <laughs> yeah well actually they might even think you're they know what you're talking about there with poker and whatnot you know it's yeah, very exactly. complicated yeah. very complicated the biggest but some people use it as a way to not tell people they play card games i got over that phase people know but when i was younger i was a little bit conservative it's kind of a nerdy thing i want to be in the closet about my nerdality and um yeah i'm going to vegas and they're like yeah. oh, man party hard i'm like totally <laughs> and, uh, I didn't part. I, uh, <laughs> I've definitely, definitely made plenty of the same excuses. I was just like, no, 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 it's not, it's not thing. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not playing cards. Yeah, 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 I'm a rager. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> totally. All right, man. Well, thanks. Uh, I'm excited to see you guys uh, playing around. All the outer world guys are, you know, cool people. Um, if you, if any of them come to 
California or uh, Vegas, you know, you got a, you got a table at Denny's with yours truly. So <laughs> <laughs> definitely <laughs> hopefully we see you out there, Nick, I appreciate you coming on everybody. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, no, it was a good time. And uh, everybody have fun, play some cards. <laughs> All everybody right. Enjoy the format. Yeah. Right. Play some, <laughs> Play some awesome uh, Guibers on turn two and slam it down, you know? Yeah, I think uh, there's uh, some wisdom in that <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> Draw right. more Guibers than your opponent. That's, yeah. the, that's the goal. Yep, and don't walk into sign of the future. And yes, lose. always count your cards. <laughs> yeah, count. Um, all right, man. Well, thanks for coming on, everybody. Have a good evening, day, whatever it is when you're watching this. And, uh, yeah, we'll talk down the line.